on my soccer universe. Um, yeah, I've rearranged the scarves here on the back a little bit to give more, um, you to have a little bit more on there. I added two. The last and the PSG scarf and I mixed and matched around. I have gotten the question where, uh, why do I have all these scarves up there? In the late 90s, early 2000s, my goal to, you know, I was still a student, <laughs> my goal to souvenir when I was visiting cities was getting scarves from the local soccer clubs. Um, in addition to, you know, I've never been to Amsterdam, so I bought that one. I had a story, you know, uh, uh, teams that I like, but most of these are more or less bought on trips. Uh, if I think about it, except the Lusk scarf, which of course I bought in Linz, it was a 90 year scarf, and everything else I bought on one trip. And the other curious question is why Espanol? <laughs> I was in Barcelona four times, I have to say. I have a little bit of a liking to Espanol because they're the little guy in the shadow of the big Barcelona and I have to say the two Espanol scarves that I have, they are pretty nice still. Probably some of my favorite scarves, especially the one with the 3D up there. Um, absolutely. But um, of all these teams, I probably, it's fair to say I care almost the least about Espanol there. Anyway, um, I'm wearing Liverpool because um, I want to talk today about what the Corona trouble might have implications, especially on the Premier League. You know, how can we finish the Premier League properly? Uh, there have been some recent developments. That's why I've been waiting with this video for a little bit now. Uh, but right off the bat, let me say, if Liverpool is not awarded this title, they can make everything null and void. If Liverpool is not awarded this title, this is the biggest travesty I can remember. Uh, taking away this title is just would just be madness in my point of view. I think Liverpool thoroughly deserved having or deserves having this title. Uh, it's actually quite um, ironic also that the, after 13, 14 short, because that's the last time Liverpool had a title challenge. And we know how that one ended, uh, where it was basically ripped from them in a pretty cruel way, but at least it was on the field. This time they dominate, they're the best team. They are gonna win the title. I actually think they wouldn't need to play a game anymore. Manchester City is gonna lose the necessary points. Absolutely convinced of that. I don't think it matches the city would win out. But yeah, before we go now into how we do all, uh, how we could move forward with the Premier League, let's quickly talk about the big issues that, that we're facing. I talked yesterday about Euro 2020 being postponed, which of course opens now, and no internationals being played. So that opens up now the space that the Euros occupy to finish the leagues. That's not a bad idea. I would say. Now another development that came out yesterday was that UEFA kind of gave a hard deadline, although people say it might not be as hard as um, it might have been stated, that all federations who want to take part in the Champions League and the Europa League need to nominate their starters by June 30th. June 30th is also another hard deadline because that's when contracts end. Uh, that's when the calendar see the season calendar with the, uh, everything ends June 30th. So you can uh, the transfer period I think starts July 1st. So um, those are kind of hard dates that you that need to be taken in, in, into account. Um, another. Uh, thing is that most of the supplier contracts for jerseys um, they start July 1st. So if there's a switch in supplier, and I'm wearing Liverpool, they're switching to Nike uh, from July 1st on, they will be wearing Nike kits. So uh, that's admittedly a smaller thing. Now, that's one big stepping, uh, stepping stone in a way because let's say you want to continue the season. Um, beyond uh, June 30th, what can you do with the players? I mean, the players might be leaving you, might finish the season with a completely different set of players. And I'm 
first and foremost talking about the top leagues. Now I know for lower leagues there might be some other rules and the regulations that could apply. I am really focusing now on uh, the top leagues in every country. So yeah, um, another uh, big issue is that uh, lost revenue. Um, not only do you um, lose the match day income, which for the biggest clubs is not a big uh, factor, uh, admittedly, but still for some smaller clubs and even the ones in the lower match day income is a big factor in their um, annual budget. Uh, so that is an issue and I think it becomes even a bigger issue in the lower leagues. Then um, what does this, how does this impact financial fair play? Because you know financial fair play and all the licensing issues, uh, do you, how do you take this in, in, in into account? Uh, we had in Austria uh, the biggest team, at least nom nominal not at the moment, Teva Rapid, is saying that they are expecting 6 million euro deficit because of the cancelled uh, season, which puts them a little bit in the trouble. I have a little bit hard time feeling bad for them, but um, just saying that's a big team in Austria that says, yeah, hey, hey, we might we might be a little bit in trouble if something like that happens, and I'm sure that other uh, lower teams also will have some trouble. I also think that uh, in Germany they are saying, yeah, um, you have to support, although then the Dortmund president say, yeah, uh, but uh, teams that are reckless, we shouldn't support, and all um, SHIT like that. Uh, but yeah, the loss of revenue is a big one, and then of course the TV contracts. Um, the TV contracts are there, and they are waiting for a product to be played. If the league cannot be played, does it mean the TV contracts are null and null and void? This could also be a big issue uh, for the Champions League being forced to be played, although I still think that given that what we are going through at the moment, the travel across Europe, I think is... N I don't see it happening that soon. So, just a few of the problems that uh, clubs and leagues might face. Now, uh, today the Premier League came out and unlike, uh, for instance, Serie A or in the Austrian Bundesliga, they said, yeah, we have three options. Um, we want to finish the league by June 30th, more or less. We have the options to uh, declare the season null, null and void. Which again, Liverpool, this would be the biggest travesty. And I think uh, everyone in Liverpool could be mad. Uh, entirely for that because I mean that would not be fair at all I mean all the other things with promotion relegation we are still spots open that we can discuss but the title goes to Liverpool I think everyone knows if you go at uh, 538 they basically uh, say Liverpool <laughs> is within Epsilon and you gotta give it to them uh, second option is that you take the current standings as the final standings. That might be iffy because, as we will see, the Premier League table is not uh, quite even. There are a few games to be played, so that might not be um, the best thing. And then the third option is to find, I mean, for the other th leagues to find a kind of a playoff system or something else. I heard a fourth option to, you know, um, extrapolate statistically. Uh, 538 would be the perfect uh, point for that. Who would be the best how should it go or you know this is some statistical model don't use the results that have of the games that have been already played and just uh, swap them because a you lose home uh, you don't take into account home uh, field advantage and b no just no that's the worst thing you could do in this from a statistical point of view. I'm a statistician, so I'm allowed to say this. Don't say me this is the best data point as I heard on the uh, Totally Football show. Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, in light of all this, Premier League came out. The new season starts when the current season ends. Basically, we are committing to finish all the fixtures. Okay. Uh, First of all, maybe for League 1, League 2 and so on, all right, fine, uh, uh, fig, figure out for them. For the Premier League, absolute nonsense. I would even say for the Championship, absolute nonsense. Uh, 
because you have so many games to be played and to be honest um, I don't expect in Austria to that the league starts before me I mean they, they said we'll start at the beginning of May with or without spectators uh, we'll shoot for that date if the situation uh, lends itself to that I personally think yeah it's probably a realistic uh, part but let's see how this will go also have in mind now that the players are off for um, one and a half two months there needs to be a slight preseason again so you have to take that in account that way I think uh, beginning of May is kind of a reasonable um, estimate but to be honest um, we hear already about the trouble in Great Britain. I don't want to comment on the policy of how to, how to deal with the coronavirus, the Euro Europe versus Britain, but I hear that there is already quite some it's already quite some trouble happening. Um, you don't know in what situation uh, the countries will be. Can we even think about soccer uh, anytime soon? That remain. I mean, I think. That we play in June, I find likely, but you know, I'm worrying about second waves and all that kind of stuff that might still hit us at one point. So um, let's see that. Um, just saying, we're gonna finish all the fixtures, and in the case of the Premier League, that's between 10 and 9 uh, rounds plus TFA Cup plus potential Champions League, which again, I think Champions League, forget about it really forget about it uh, I know TV blah 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 there's a lot of money involved with it you need to find the find, find a way around it I don't think it will send the right message if teams travel and fans travel all across Europe and uh, start another spread that just is not gonna happen uh, gotta be honest with it so yeah but I think it's too many games uh, even in a two-month window yes maybe you can uh, fit in 10 Premier League games but if you then have the FA Cup and the FA Cup is not an all prem Premier League affair nope uh, unless you take my proposition I think forget about the FA Cup which leads us now uh, what I think would be a reasonable way to go forward and this is a little bit inspired in about my thoughts about the Austria League and I showed it you already uh, what I think I think for Serie A could work but I actually found a I think an even better solution uh, to uh, decide it than what I had in Serie A and I will actually show you how this would work for Serie A as well it is all contingent do you want to finish the FA Cup and how much time have you got if you have to, to meet the June 30th deadline and you have basically the month of June to play, maybe my first proposition might work. Uh, the second one is I really hate how they do it in Austria that they just split the table. You know, everyone plays everyone, which is something we don't have now in the leagues. Then they split the table and cut the points in half or give bonus points. Um, yes, it might be great TV, but... Uh, you kind of discard everything that has been played so far so I still think that results that have been played should count as much as possible now uh, with some restrictions so my idea is as follows let's look at the current Premier League table we see we have uh, Liverpool with 82 points ahead of Manchester City 57 uh, if Manchester City loses twice or Liverpool wins twice they um, Liverpool will be champions. Uh, we see there's a kind of a good race for uh, the Champions League spots, which again, Manchester City, that's another issue. What will happen now with Manchester City? Uh, at the moment, I don't think there are any judgments at uh, CAS, so let's see about that. But there's a race for Champions League spots and even for the Europa League spots. I assign now three spots uh, here on the table and no one goes to the FA Cup winner. Again, well, I wouldn't worry about the FA Cup and also the um, relegation battle is kind of tied with everyone from definitely Brighton uh, up until Aston Villa having a good chance to uh, either stay or get uh, relegated so it is really really tight there on the bottom so my idea now is um, take these standings we know these have been played and now I know it is not perfect, it has, uh, and I will talk about the downsides of that one. But take the top six, 
So for, from Liverpool to Wolves, then take from Sheffield to Everton, take the next six, and then make a league of eight for uh, relegation. Uh, the top six decide uh, the champion, and also um, two more Champions League spots. Then the second six get a shot at a Europa League spot. I will explain to you um, how that might happen. Uh, so you have basically all the, Euro the European spots among the winner of the um, uh, the, the winner of the second. I, I, I will call it now League B or Premier League B if you like. Um, and all the top six will already play in Europe, um, kind of uh, way to go about that. And then you have a real fight for rele re relegation that will take a little bit longer. So if we do that, and then I would say only the games between those top six, the middle six and the bottom eight, count against each other so you make a whole new league table uh, i'm doing it here and i still keep it in the order of the teams as we had them before you see actually quite some stuff changes so uh let's put it in order and we see that on the top six liverpool already are champions and you see in a, a league of six you have only 10 games to play liverpool already played eight they have two more to play so uh, this would be a scenario where I say this really would work perfectly if you just need to finish the season, you have a sh short window, you want to finish the FA Cup, here you go. In that scenario, uh, note Manchester United has been really great against the, top, uh, the other top six teams. 18 points, I mean, they cannot catch Liverpool anymore. Liverpool would be champions in that uh, scenario, but they have secured... Uh, more or less, yeah, they have secured a second spot already. Uh, of course, Chelsea has a game less to play. So this is uh, less played than uh, the others. There are a few with uh, three with nine, two with eight, and one with seven. So it's not necessarily all ideal because um, of these uneven games, but I think this could be worked out somehow. Uh, but yeah, you would have a real battle in this case for the final Champions League uh, spot because one would go to Manchester United, which, yeah, now you can talk about it. But I actually think that Manchester United is in such a good form or it's a fleet. And when I saw this table, I think they would deserve it. And then you have uh, Manchester City, Leicester, Chelsea and Wolves being fairly close to each other, although Wolves probably has uh, not the big shot, but uh, Chelsea would have a good chance to make points with uh, two games less. To really fight out for that spot. Then in the league, Premier League B, you have Sheffield United with a big lead and with quite some games to go. So they would be also in favor to uh, get into this Europa League playoff. But note we have Arsenal in there. And then another one, Spurs, has only six games among these. I can see someone really complaining about that. But yeah, with that, let's give Spurs uh, one more game 13. Um, they potentially could uh, catch Sheffield United. Uh, so that would be now for the last European spot, which uh, will, will be given to the, the nominal seventh place team, the winner of League B. And then I will do it as follows. The um, uh, fourth place team of the uh, Premier League A would play potentially a home game, could also, also be neutral side, put it at Wembley if you like against the seventh, uh, the winner of League B, and then five and six play against each other. So in, if this is our final table here, which most likely will not be, we would have Leicester City playing against Sheffield United and Chelsea against Wolves, and the winner plays for the final Champions League spot. I think that would be an exciting format to have. Now uh, the battle uh, against relegation, um, we has Again, Newcastle United, in this case, you would have to play 14 uh, games. It's a league of eight. So we have, for instance, Bournemouth and Aston Villa are a too, maybe a little bit too much ahead. But still, I think this would be workable to look at it. That, that way, I was actually surprised how well Aston Villa is doing against competition. But then it's rather uneven. Uh, and if I see all the others, especially if I look at New Newcastle, they might actually win this one uh, Norwich is a little bit out of, out, out, out of it but 
that's one way to finish the season. Now, if you have a little, and I think if you do it this way, um, you can also, you would have the time to finish an FA Cup as well. Not perfect, but I think would be fair. I think uh, the next one um, is then a little bit easier, but I have to say I like this part so much that I wanted to show see how it works for Serie A, and then we'll go to the second um, um, a suggestion for Serie A, I do the same thing. We have a very similar set, set setup here. I also marked in blue as before the teams that are still playing in Europe, where there are quite some more uh, in Italy still. Um, and if we do it that way, we would have a we would have it a little bit fairer because it's a lot more even because Serie A is. Uh, further behind. So uh, there's a little bit more to play. For instance, Juve uh, would have to play three more games. We have Atalanta, Napoli have to play four games still. So there would be a veritable title race. I think this would be a great solution. Also, I would keep the playoffs as we have them. Uh, Milan enjoying a very comfy lead uh, here. And then the relegation battle also kind of open and note how Torino is doing badly against the uh, bottom teams and how well Sampdoria is doing in there. So I think for Italy this solution works probably even better. And now note the uh, if these were the final final standings, the uh, relegation uh, or the playoff uh, for the Champions League spot would be great. Inter, Milan, Roma, Napoli, that sounds like a lot of fun, I have to say. And also you have Lazio still within three points of Juve. And if you give them a head-to-head, -head, I think this would be exciting for Serie A. For the Premier League, however, I think, since uh, Premier League is way more advanced, I might think that splitting the league in two, in two ten league, um, ten team leagues might make a little bit more sense. Just a little bit more. So, uh, again, I put it in order. Again, Manchester United shoots up, again, Liverpool are, are already done. And if you look now, it is a lot more even, although there are some teams that have more uh, less uh, games played. For instance, Sheffield United is lagging behind. You know, not happy Crystal Palace is way ahead. But everyone else has uh, 13, 14, 15 games. So I think this is something workable. And maybe this could work even that you can put an FA Cup in there. I think if you have two months left, this would be a great solution, to be honest. Liverpool would already be champions. Um, with um, Manchester United, I think 10, we have 18 games. Manchester United will have three games left. Um, three times three is nine. They cannot reach Liverpool anymore. So uh, that's out of the question. So in any case, Liverpool are crowned champions, but then you could have a really direct gift of spots with that way you don't have any additional playoffs. I think that would work fine. Uh, and on the bottom, uh, similarly, uh, again, uh, I'm kind of surprised about where some teams are. Again, Aston Villa is doing quite well against uh, teams of similar... Uh, strength in Southampton is maybe not as far as uh, as far as ahead as they would be other otherwise. But I think I think this would this for England for the Premier League. I think I would go for this solution for Serie A. I would actually really do the six six eight format with the playoff. Do you have any suggestions? I again I know it's not perfect because we have uneven amount of games. But I honestly think I like this better than awarding points. I mean, yes, you could then start with the current points that you have, but then you run out of, you know, you're not finishing the season with as many games as you would have. You would not have that Liverpool are the, uh, you know, they get the points record or, or whatever. That I don't like having the points. Could work, not a fan, not a fan, um, but you know, maybe more workable than uh, committing to finishing the season way beyond the 30th of June. That I think would be absolute madness, absolute madness, because you have to fix your calendars all over the place. Let me know your thoughts and how you like my idea. Uh, it again, I'm pretty. 
aware of what are the shortcomings, uh, but I think it would be uh, fun. You have to look for every league, and I will again. I will do this now for the Bundesliga, and I will do this for La Liga. I'm curious what uh, will happen there, and probably at Liga as well. If there are which formats work a little bit better, I mean, all these leagues are a little bit further ahead than Serie A. For Serie A, I think a six six eight format is probably the best one. For the others, I can imagine splitting the leagues somehow. We'll look into that. Again, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, long video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.